And now, brought to you in radiographic sound, Biff Straker and his fantastic adventures in the spaceways is on the air. Last week, Biff, Commander Angela Deegan, Professor Ildine Thermopylae, Patrolman Varger, and the human criminal Doyen were prisoners of the Ratman Gang on this strange new future Earth. Captain Barra, the leader of the gang, beat Commander Deegan nearly to death to learn the access codes for the downed Nova Command shuttle. In a desperate attempt to save her life, Biff challenged Barra to a duel, battling on a narrow board across the length of what once was a swimming pool, but now filled with dangerous fragments of glass. Wearing a thick glove embedded with the shards, Biff waits for Barra to make the first move on the unstable plank, while Dr. Thermopylae races to save the gravely injured commander. And now, let us head into the 31st century where Biff Straker awaits the battle over the pool of death. This is your last chance. Save your friend, Commander. Give up the shuttle. I cannot, Barra. Don't be a fool. Give the Ratman what he wants and we can get out of here. Mr. Doyen, your cowardice is only overshadowed by your contemptible nature. Professor Thermopylae, practical cowardice is what's kept me alive all these years. You should try it. Oh, silence, idiot. Enough! Now you will die, Sibiot. I have never been defeated in a challenge. Did you talk your opponents to death? Hold on, Commander. What are you doing? I'm taking apart my pen. What are you holding? Drop it! Look, my Rodentia friend. Your captain has managed to critically injure the only one of us who has access to the shuttle. Can you hear her gasping for breath? He's crushed her windpipe and she's barely getting air. If I don't open up her trachea, she will die. And? And that means none of us will get off this rock, you cheese-rotted brainstem. Oh! Oh! He's not wrong. If she dies, your captain has no prize. Your dagger. I will need to cut an opening to insert the tube. Oh, Biff, the chain. Don't you long now. He's fighting Vera with brute strength. No tactics. Why? I've told you, Patrol Hound Barger. Biff is not from Luna. He is the last man. Sapiot of Earth. Is that possible? Die, Sapiot. I now be a chain. For that, can use it. Oh, a man. The trinket given to Biff from the professor was a metallic loop. Blowing hard into it, the loop produced a high-pitched whistle high enough to affect animal men with devastating results. Now, Commander! <coughs> here, Patrol Helm. Come with us. Where? Follow us. We're getting out of here. Oh, oh. Give me your hand, Captain. No! Don't bother picking up that slug thrower, Mr. Doyen. Wouldn't think of it. Patrol hound. Stand back! Stand! Biff! Ah! Come on! No! Give me your hand, Barrow! I'll pull you up! <coughs> He's finished, Biff! Come quickly before the others recover! Sorry, Captain. Let's go. With speed, the four humans and one patrol hound make their way from the pool of death and into the chemical plant. What are we looking for, Professor? Commander Deacon can't go on much further. Oh, I can't. 
We won't need to run much farther if we can find a canister, uh, almost the size of a Behelin rocket or a shoulder-mounted Echocom locator. Anything I know. An air tank? Are you worried about saving this simple <laughs> No offense. None take it. You realize, of course, that there is probably three dozen groups of rat men outside this building right now? No, I'd say, Pitt, I'm growing tired of your complaints. Killing their leader will certainly not ingratiate ourselves to- Actually, they most likely would see the death of Captain Barra as an opportunity for advancement. I tried to save him. He didn't grab my hand. <laughs> a sapient saving a roadie. That'll be the day. Excuse me, Professor. Is this what you're looking for? Yes. Yes, Varger. That will do fine. Is this the only one? <laughs> There's several others in this back room. They're inside. Get any marked hydrogen. Don't bother with the others and meet us on the roof. Yes, Professor. How'll we get to the roof? Stairwell. Other side. This way. Get going. Doyen. Help Angel. And Commander Deegan. Biff, the Commander will have my head, but it's not good. She needs to find a place not to move. The trach in her throat needs to be positioned properly or she'll suffocate. She won't die, Professor. We'll get what you need. I know you will. Very well. Hurry to the roof. Gently! The Commander is still weak and the breathing tube cannot be moved. Someday you may all well regret your turn to move! move. I'm coming. I find the acerbic company of the Commanders more amenable than that of our Bratman hosts. There's two other tanks. I, I can grab one. I'll take the last. Get it to the roof. Ugh, careful. These things are dangerous. Dangerous? The hydrogen is highly combustible. One spark and... Go! I'll hold them back. But you're already hurt. In here. Go! Die. Good thing this tank is heavy. Why won't you die? Stand back. Let me get a shot. Time to go. Here. Catch. What? He's making a run for the stairs. No, don't shoot. Don't shoot. Good night! A spark from the roadie's rifle shot exploded the hydrogen tank, just as Biff made it halfway up the stairs to the roof. The plume of flame nearly destroyed the entire building. But what of Biff? Did he survive the blast? Tank's almost empty. He said he'd be right behind me. With Rodentia scurrying along, we can't wait. Just a moment longer. <laughs> Hold on. Give me your hand. Hurry up, you fool. I'm falling. Stop complaining, safe it, and grab my wrist. It's... Yeah. <sighs> there. Mr. Straker has met his destiny. And if we do not wish to join him, we must go. This entire building is unstable. We have to wait. No, Professor. Doyen's right. We, we can't just... The commander's safety. Very well. Release the anchors. Location device may not even carry us. We have another canister of hydrogen. Everyone tie on. Secure the commander. I would have preferred a basket with this balloon. Just be grateful we could pull the layers apart from the commander's upper suit. Are we ready? Letting loose the last rope. Farewell, Beef. Wait, what's that? Rat man. I'll get him. No, wait, it's Beef. He's climbing from the stairwell. Hold on! Beef, over here! I'm coming! Here, grab my arm! Up, oh. It's no good. We're too heavy. We can't fly with so many people. The building's oh. collapsing. Hold on! Let him go! Let him go! He's pulling us down! Stop! You killed Stop! Let go, Mr. Straker! Let go! 
No, enough. Oh. Ah. A nice right cross. Thank you. Wrap that around your wrist until we can fasten. Unfortunately, he's right. I'm just pulling you down. At least we'll float down together and not die in the building. No. No, you won't. The troll comes farther. What are you... Another few seconds and I can jump to safety on the ground. I'll evade the roadies and catch up with my unit. You need to go. But there are so many. I'll be fine. But... You're prisoners. Guess I'll just have to blame it on the roadie gang. Good luck, patrol hound. You too, Biff Straker. Welcome to the future. Thank you. Hold on. You should bounce upwards. Now. Here we go. I hope... I hope he'll be okay. There's enough smoke and dust down there that he'll have a good chance. Mrs. Egan has passed out again. Move this way, Professor. She doesn't look like she's breathing. She's stable for now, Beast. But we need to get her to a medical center soon. Up, up and away, our heroes go. But to where? And for how long? Minutes turn into hours as they continue to climb slowly. Ropes and straps digging into their flesh as they hang precariously, feet facing earthwards. Until... Have we hit something? If I answer, will someone hit me again? It's a cloud! A cloud? But how can we hit a cloud? I am at a loss. It is solid, like some kind of polymer substance. Perhaps we can work our way around the edge. Here, use the rifle to prod us free. Perhaps we found ourselves on the hull of a Viking raider. Unlikely. While this is the time of year, I have not heard of a Viking dragon ship disguised as a cloud. Though it would make effective camouflage. Vikings? In the sky? Not on Earth. It's one of the few taboos the Vikings have. They consider Earth sacred for some reason. There! Up again. Yes, but for how long? Before the air gets too thin. Mr. Straker, why would the air... Oh my! Please tell me that is a castle I see situated on this cloud and that I have not indeed gone mad. It would indeed appear to be a castle of some sorts. It is, in fact, my castle. We do not wish to trespass, sir. In fact, we were unaware of this cloud in the first place. <laughs> that was my intention. Please, you are welcome to my abode. Come in. Galatea will see to your needs. Yes, sire. May I ask the name of our host? You can call me Methuselah. Yes, I think that name would be most... Out. A castle in the clouds. Robotic servants. A man called Methuselah. Who is this stranger from the Middle Ages? What sits in store for our heroes? Will Commander Deacon recover? Return next time for Episode 6 of Biff Straker with... Biff Striker and the Sky Vikings. Episode 5 The Man They Call Methuselah stars Tanya Malayevich as Commander Angela Deegan, Colleen McIsaac as Professor Ildine Thermopylae, Glenn Haskell as Patrol Hound Varger, Ellie Hirschman as Captain Barra, David Alt as Doyen. With Jim Adams and Bob Teague as Rhodey 1, 3, and 2. With Antonia Manette as Galatea. And John Bell as Methuselah. Jack Ward is Biff Straker. Audio production and sound design by Richard Summers. I'm your announcer, Mark Brzee. Return with us next time for Biff Straker and the Sky...
The trinket given to Biff from the professor was a metallic loop. Blowing hard into it, the loop produced a high-pitched whistle, high enough to affect animal men with devastating results. Now, Commander! <coughs> here, Patrol Helm. Come with us. Where? Follow us. We're getting out of here. Don't bother picking up that slug thrower, Mr. Doyen. Wouldn't think of it, patrol hound. Stand back! Stand! Fifth, ah! come on! No! Give me your hand barrel! I'll pull you up! He's <coughs> finished, Biff! Come quickly before the others recover! Sorry, Captain. Let's go. Look, my Rodentia friend, your captain has managed to critically injure the only one of us who has access to the shuttle. Can you hear her gasping for breath? He's crushed her windpipe and she's barely getting air. If I don't open up her trachea, she will die. And? And that means none of us will get off this rock, you cheese-rotted brainstem. Oh. Oh. He's not wrong. If she dies, your captain has no prize. <laughs> your dagger. I will need to cut an opening to insert the tube. Whoa. Whoa. Biff! The chain! Don't you long now. He's fighting Vera with brute strength. No tactics. Why? I've told you, Patrol Hound Barger. Biff is not from Luna. He is the last man... sapient of Earth. Is that possible? Die! Sapient! I... Now, Biff! Chain for that. Can use it. Oh. Guards, Biff waits for Barra to make the first move on the unstable plank, while Doctor Thermopylae races to save the gravely injured commander. And now, let us head into the 31st century, where Biff Straker awaits the battle over the pool of death. This is your last chance. Save your friend, Commander. Give up the shuttle. I cannot, Barra. Don't be a fool. Give the Ratman what he wants and we can get out of here. Mr. Doyen, your cowardice is only overshadowed by your contemptible nature. Professor Thermopylae, practical cowardice is what's kept me alive all these years. You should try it. Oh, Silence, idiot. Oh. Enough! Now you will die, Sapiens. I have never been defeated in a challenge. You talk your opponents to death? Ah! Hold on, Commander. What are you doing? I'm taking apart my pen. What are you holding? And now, brought to you in radiographic sound, Biff Straker and his fantastic adventures in the Spaceways is on the air. Last week, Biff, Commander Angela Deegan, Professor Ildine Thermopylae, Patrolman Varger, and the human criminal Doyen were prisoners of the Ratman Gang on this strange new future Earth. Captain Barra, the leader of the gang, beat Commander Deegan nearly to death to learn the access codes for the downed Nova Command shuttle. In a desperate attempt to save her life, Biff challenged Barra to a duel, battling on a narrow board across the length of what once was a swimming pool, but now filled with dangerous fragments of glass. Wearing a thick glove embedded with a sharp... With speed, the four humans and one patrol hound make their way from the pool of death and into the chemical plant. What are we looking for, Professor? Commander Deacon can't go on much further. Oh, I can't. We won't need to run much farther if we can find the canister. 
uh, almost the size of a Behelin rocket or a shoulder-mounted Echocom localator. Anything I'd know. An air tank? Are you worried about saving this simple thing? <laughs> no offence. None taken. You realise, of course, that there is probably three dozen groups of rat men outside this building right now? No, I'd say bit. I'm growing tired of your complaints. Killing their leader will certainly not ingratiate ourselves to- Actually, they most likely would see the death of Captain Barra as an opportunity for advancement. I tried to save him. He didn't grab my hand. <laughs> a sapiot saving a roadie. That'll be the day. Excuse me, Professor. 